Philippe Bismuth, CEO of Arval, how do you think that the automotive and car fleet business is going to evolve in Europe? The years to come uh, are going to be placed against the backdrop of a continuing economic uh, recession or stagnation. And also, we all know that the car manufacturing sector uh, has an overcapacity excess supply, and this is uh, likely to continue in the next years. So this will clearly influence the new car market, the pricing in the new car market, and also the used car market as well. So we expect uh, the current turmoil we've observed this year to continue for the next two or three years. Regarding the customers and the corporate uh, organizations, I think against this backdrop, they are likely to have a quite conservative approach with their fleet, uh, meaning uh, probably uh, they are willing to extend their existing fleet and we are likely to see uh, to a certain degree uh, defleeting uh, more conservative uh, car policies uh, being uh, uh, implemented. However, on the other hand, in uh, these uh, difficult times, it is very likely that uh, there will be uh, a preference for renting uh, outsourcing uh, against buying, which makes sense in terms of optimizing the longer term uh, cost of ownership of vehicles. So we'll see probably uh, a higher take up of uh, full service leasing in uh, uh, corporate organization, in particular the uh, smaller ones. Okay, thank you for that. Within this context, do you expect to see more consolidation within the car leasing domain? It is a fact that over the recent years, there has been a degree of consolidation in our uh, sector, in particular in the international arena. Uh, having said that, the number of players has not decreased. Uh, what we can observe is that uh, among the biggest players, let's say the top five, the size and the share of, the, of this uh, group of players has increased. So that's a, a clear trend. However, on the other hand, locally in the countries, we do not observe a consolidation. The sector is regenerating itself. There are consolidation at the top, but also the uh, sector regenerates itself at the edges. So it's a dual trend we see. In the global arena, strong players emerging, and in the local arena, still a very, very competitive landscape. Finally, it's not unlikely that new players will enter uh, this arena. Uh, we could think of uh, a few car makers uh, who are not active yet, and also financial institutions coming from Asia. So is the consolidation uh, something which is uh, to be taken for granted? I wouldn't see this as a foregone conclusion. Some players in the market have suggested that a bank is no longer the ideal main stakeholder for a fleet management company. What do you say to that? The players uh, in the market, uh, namely, are the uh, German car makers. Now, let's look. What is an ideal shareholder? An ideal shareholder for any company is a shareholder that provides you with resources and also endorses and supports your strategy. On the former, uh, about providing the resources, it's not about the uh, sector of the shareholder, it's more about its shape and its health. And we see today uh, car makers who are in good shape and also car makers who are struggling. In the banking sector, likewise, you've got banks who are in good shape and good health and banks who are struggling. So again, this is not about the sector. Regarding the latter uh, purpose of a shareholder, which is to support uh, the strategy, in particular, if we look at the sector I represent, which is the multi-brand uh, car leasing, what you expect from the shareholder is neutrality, because that's what your corporate organization expects. And I don't think that, uh, let's say, a uh, car maker, whoever it is, uh, further to his own captive, whose purpose is to support the brand, but let's say further to that, uh, uh, a car maker is not the ideal shareholder, whereas a bank is probably the ideal institution, a bank or an independent investor. 
So again, uh, I disagree with that statement. Thank you. And finally, what would your top piece of advice be to a fleet manager looking to optimize his fleet management processes? My advice would be uh, basically on two things. First of all, uh, I would recommend uh, extending uh, the uh, duration of the leasing contract. Common practice so far has been to go for three-year contract. I think now we've got all the economic rationale to go for longer-term contracts, such as five-year contracts. Reason for that is that the cars now are more reliable and the cost of maintenance and repair is decreasing. And also, the drivers drive less. Mileage is lower. And this makes sense. And uh, a five-year contract gives a smaller total cost of ownership. So that's my, my first advice. Second advice is for the fleet manager to partner with a strong and global fleet operator who can support him in optimizing the processes in his fleet and in particular enhancing and improving the behavior of the driver because that's where now the key is. All the issues and stakes relating to corporate social responsibility, cost of ownership, risk management relate more to the driver than the asset itself. Philippe Busmut, thank you for those very clear and concrete responses.